Keith again. Now, it's going to be another review for you, but it's a little bit different. It's actually a follow-up review on a gun that was reviewed just a few videos ago, and that is the Army Armament L85A1. Now then, the reason I'm doing a follow-up review on this is basically because a lot of reviewers out there, especially the ones that are doing these very professional, polished reviews, they're really just selling you a product. So they're telling you about what it's like out of the box and very few of them have probably got any experience of actually skirmishing with the weapon and therefore they're not really able to tell you about any associated issues that they've had with the gun in terms of performance and reliability and so on. So what I'm going to do is cover that in a follow-up review and as I did in the review video itself of the Army Armament gun out of the box I'm going to start at the front and make my way to the back covering bad points but also good points of the gun and then I'll give you an overall verdict at the end of the video. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the front handguard. This is where the battery is kept. Now the overall design of this is a very sturdy design for holding the battery so you're not really going to lose it during gameplay. You've got no problems whatsoever during gameplay with losing the battery or any damage to the wiring inside. The downside of that, because it is so secure, is it means that during gameplay, if your battery has um, malfunctioned or if you simply haven't charged it enough, to do a battery swap during gameplay, it can be quite fiddly. You've got to release screws, dismantle the whole handguard, wire the battery into place, and then assemble it all together again. So in an environment where you're being shot at, you can't really do a quick battery change, it's more that you would need to go back to the safe zone and uh, do that there. So if you're out skirmishing all day on a, a military simulation type of game for example and you get a malfunction, you're not going to be able to do that effectively or efficiently under fire. You do need to find some place safe that you can do that and until you've got the hang or you've uh, had a bit of practice of doing that, it can be time consuming, it can take several minutes to swap it over and you've also got the, the risk of losing a couple of the small components such as the screw or the rifle sling that's on the left of this weapon. So, sturdy design but it does take time to change the battery over. Coming back from there, no problems with the, the trigger, safety catch, anything like that. Those were all very reliable. The blowback mechanism on this gun, very effective. If you like blowback, then you'll know that you're not going to get a weapon that fires silently. The whole nature of the gun, with this being metal and the bolt going back and forward, it does add noise to the weapon overall. So you're not going to get your kind of your silent weapon that you want to use to sneak up on people. Once you fire it, everyone within a reasonable distance is going to hear the weapon firing. But it does make a nice sound, and you'll have heard that on the first video. Um, so blowback mechanism being fine. The catch that holds it. If you don't want to use the blowback mechanism, there's no associated problems there. It's very effective. At no point did that catch release malfunction in any way. Once that had been secured, the bolt stayed back and I could fire without the blowback mechanism until I released it. So absolutely no problems there. On the opposite side of the weapon, we have the magazine release catch. Now the magazine that comes with this gun and I've heard that this is, a, well not a problem, but something that does bother a few people is that the magazine fits very tightly. So again if you're looking for a quick mag change, you may find yourself needing to use a little bit more strength than you would on other airsoft guns. You do need to give this one a good pull. It might be a problem that's just asso associated with a few guns rather than the whole range of them, but on this gun it does take a little bit of strength to pull that out and then you've got to really knock it back in again once you've got a new magazine in the, the magazine well. Coming back from there, we have the fire selector. Now when it sits up the way, that's on single shot. To go to fully automatic, you've got to push it down the way. But where this button is situated is right at the back of the, the weapon itself. So just a quick demonstration. You've got the, the weapon in your shoulder, and the catch is there and you tend to lean forward with the weapon 
held in your shoulder. Now then, if you've got any kind of webbing here, body armour, if you've got a chest rig with pockets on, or even just a baggy jacket, what you'll find is that rubs on your clothing. And without fail, time and time again, you're going to knock it up on a single shot. So you may well have snuck up on someone, you might be midway through an assault, you've got the weapon on fully automatic, shoulder the weapon, and after maybe just a quick burst or two of automatic fire, you'll find it single shot. And if you're not aware of the problem, you might think there's some kind of malfunction. But this is quite loose. So if you're going to keep this reliably on fully automatic when you're moving around in the field with the weapon, you may want to modify that. Now then, it's worth also mentioning as well that this gun, when it came as standard, out of the box, had the old piston assembly that Army Armament included with it. What I've done since purchasing the gun is actually replaced the whole piston assembly because the one fault that this gun has, and it's something that not a lot of retailers will tell you about because like I said they want to sell you the product, is that this gun is renowned for shredding or completely destroying the piston assembly in here with the blowback mechanism. So what I did was I had the retailer that supplied this gun to me, Airsoft World in Scotland, completely overhaul that whole, that whole assembly and this gun's been very, very reliable since I bought it. There's never been any problems with it. In terms of FPS, it's been consistent throughout. Somewhere normally between about 328 up to about 340 FPS maximum. The, the battery that was supplied with this gun, um, to be honest with you, is it's just not adequate for the job. I've been fairly lucky with Chinese batteries until I purchased this gun. It was fully charged before the first skirmish. I used the gun deliberately during a game that was going to put it through its paces so that it was being used quite intensively and the battery was losing power quite rapidly after about 40 to 45 minutes of play and that's using the high cap magazine and going through ammunition quite quickly. If you were doing Milsim Airsoft in that you had low cap magazines that were maybe firing 30 to 50 BBs per magazine and going through ammunition at a, a kind of realistic military rate then the standard Chinese battery would probably do for a, a day worth of Airsoft. But for your standard skirmish site where the vast majority of people are on at least mid caps and many on high caps as well. The Chinese battery that came with this gun, it just wasn't adequate. A friend of mine at Players of War um, gave me a loan of a LiPo battery, a lithium polymer with a 7.4 volt 850 ma, put that in the gun and it drastically improved the overall performance of it. Even down to the range, the range on the gun seemed to improve drastically when using the LiPo. 7.4 volt battery is not going to give you a tremendous rate of fire but for an airsoft gun that's got a, a blowback system I wouldn't want a, a huge rate of fire anywhere. You would find that you probably damage your, your mechanism and wear the gun out a lot sooner just through normal wear and tear. So is it still a gun I would recommend? Definitely. Of every airsoft weapon I've fired this now is my absolute favourite. Until I got this gun it was the AGM MP or Stig 44 that was my favourite. And to be honest with you guys, as much as I love World War II, this gun is now my personal favourite that I've fired until this day. So, again, this is an honest review based on my own skirmishing. I'm not trying to sell you this product. Uh, no one sponsors me. The guns and gear and kit I review are all things I own personally. So everything is bought by me, field tested by me. And if it's worth putting on YouTube and recommending to you guys, then I'll put it up and let you see it. If I've got kit that I've bought that's just garbage, then I'll let you know about that as well, guys. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.